see. Oh, there we go. You can see me. Can, I can, you, hear, yes. can you hear my audio? I can hear you fine. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. I had my video off and I just realized I didn't plug in my web camera. <laughs> so how's things? Uh, mixed reviews. Um, yep. Got to say, I'm not bad. I, I have custody, shared custody of a dog and he's with me this week. So that's always a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a gorgeous time of year where I am. I'm probably same as you, just you're probably a little cooler, a little later than us. Um, or yeah, which state? I'm in Wisconsin. South Dakota. I'm on the Minnesota South Dakota oh, border. Oh, you're really in the hinterlands. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. How about yourself? Which state are you in? I'm in Connecticut. Okay, yeah. I used to live in Boston. Uh, your calcium's. And then the antibiotics they gave me. So I was on, I had a pick line and I was doing IV antibiotics for months. I had a wound vacuum on it for months. Uh, it was very, you know, it was a grim situation. But the thing that none of my doctors has discussed with me is I did get the calcium score about a year after I did keto. Mm -hmm. And that calcium score came up around 985, which is obviously very high. Right. But what my doctors didn't mm -hmm. bother to uh, review with me was my hip, my, my illness, which was that that kind of a score is from both the infection and the antibiotics. Mm -hmm. So according to my research anyway, they and both of those are highly inflammatory to mm -hmm. the arteries and stuff. And so mm -hmm. I think that that's where that came from. The other part of that is that uh, they didn't really scotch the infection. So um, I'm gonna say two years later, the hip starts to bother me again and it's infected again. So at this point, uh, I got that taken care of with a uh, an antibiotic prosthesis. They basically put in a plastic prosthesis with you know antibiotics. So I'm, again, I'm getting uh, I have an infection. It's again very serious. Uh, I get this these antibiotics. They're also very serious. And then I get a, a calcium scan about a, a year after that, maybe eight months, and that was even higher. That was around 1908. Mm -hmm. So we went from 900 something to 19. And this is on a scale from what, zero to 5,000? I don't know what the top of the end of the scale is. I've never, I've never encountered anybody with my scores before. And yeah. my doctor, basically my, my physician has, and I don't, my cardiologist is a sort of a sphinx-like character, so I don't know. But, uh, but I mean, he knows my scores. Mm -hmm. And then he did a, he measured this all uh, last year. And the new score is 1394. Mm -hmm. So it dropped 600, uh, well, yeah, almost 600 points mm -hmm. in two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what am I doing? Well, carnivore. Basically, I don't rarely eat carb any carbohydrates. And mm -hmm. I'm taking um, a uh, MK2 and MK7, D2, uh, K2, and D3. Mm -hmm. And coins on Q10. Yep. You know, with fats. Um, basically, I never eat a corn oil. I don't eat any of those fats. I eat only, really, only only saturated fats. I stopped pretty much eating olive oil lately too. Perfect. And that's yep. what I do. Interesting. Yeah, that's what I. That's common. I mean, I've had people go down to zero. I've had people with pretty high CAC scores, literally take them down to zero, which is supposedly unheard of. <clears throat> That's supposed to be, I mean, it's supposed to be, uh, the cardiologist tells me I got chromium pipes. You know, <laughs> they're basically solidified. Yeah, that's but, a lot, your, yeah, your high score. Yeah. Well, have you ever seen that research on berberine reversing plaque? Like, you know, people well, are, people are always interested in berber, you know, like plaque reversal. How do you reverse plaque, right? And and I do come across these stories and I always regret that I don't document them because, you know, I've been doing DNA consulting since 2010 and I've had quite a few people reverse plaque in the arteries and there's always a pattern and you're a good example, Patrick. The pattern is number one, inflammation damages arteries, right? And it could be from antibiotics, like you said, or other prescription drugs or stress or lack of sleep or poor hormones and all, all the things. Uh, but then 
the damage gets fixed by cholesterol, you know, predominantly cholesterol is there, but there's also calcium and just all kinds of other crystals of uh, cholesterol. There's all kinds of other things in those plaques. Um, microplastics, right? Like all kinds of stuff gets deposited in those, yeah. in those lesions. But here's what people often don't understand. And I'm sure you understand this, but you know, your plaque is predominantly made of cholesterol, which is fat. It's lipid. It's kind of like butter. You know how butter floats on water. And if you want to burn fats for energy in your body, you have to get rid of the carbs. If you have a high blood sugar and you're always eating carbs, your body just will continue to burn sugar instead of burning fats for energy. But if you teach your body to burn fats, which you've done by going carnivore keto, right? Keto carnivore sort of. That's it. Yeah, then your body can burn the plaque out of your arteries. And that's why berberine can decrease plaque also or just burn plaque off because it decreases your blood sugar. So it's it's the same thing. It's just a different mechanism, meaning the berberine is lowering your blood sugar, which is forcing your body to burn fats for energy. Right. Um, it doesn't work as effective as just teaching your body to burn fats, but going into more of a keto type diet. Um and again, a carnivore diet is effectively a keto diet, especially if you're eating a lot of fats. I'm assuming you're eating pretty high fat diet. I don't know if I'm eating. The thing is, my blood sugar tends to stay around 90, 100, mm -hmm. which seems high to pretty me. High. And yep. my ketones tend to be, you know, five to <clears throat> five to nine. Uh, five to nine. Wow. That's high. Well, no, I beg your pardon. 0. 0.5 to. 0. 0.5. 5, okay. <laughs> That's like outrageously. Hold on. It's like okay, Right. 0.5 to 0.9 sound. That's yeah, also is, still pretty high, actually. That's good. Well, I feel like I'm uh, Sean Baker, who basically eats a shit ton of protein as well, mm -hmm. says he did when he's checked his ketones, they tend to be around five. And he doesn't bother to check other stuff because he feels good. And so why bother? But I think that there's a certain kind of, I think I'm probably, uh, you know, with gluconeogenesis because I'm not eating carbs. I'm yep. making carbs for whatever per intrinsic purpose for my body. And I'm not quite into, a, you know, heavy duty ketosis, but neither yep. am I burning sugar necessarily. Yep. Yep. So it seems to me anyway. Yeah, but exactly. I'm, I've, I've lately added berberine to the stack mm -hmm. um, and we'll see, you know, see how it goes. It's, uh, I also have, I mean, I've watched, you know, one, once I started the keto, my, the, my blood work changed there's an inflection point in my blood work. And immediately my triglycerides went down, my HDL went up, my testosterone quadrupled. It's oh, wow. like all of this yeah. stuff just happened yeah. in about six months after going keto. And if you need yeah. to know if you're doing the right thing, well, there's the no duh. Exactly. And over time, um, things like my, my white count and my platelets have gone down. Of course, part of the composition of that, those plaques are platelets. So I don't, you know, I don't need them because I'm not making plaques anymore. In fact, it sounds like, looks like I'm chewing them up. So yep. Yep. Um, we'll see. Uh, That's good. Yeah. My doctor said he's had other patients and I wasn't on my game. I didn't press him on this. What were they doing? But he said he said several other patients have similar kinds of uh, you know, diminished plaque outcomes recently. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I gotta think that's the keto. Cardiac. That's super rare. Yeah. Most cardiologists will tell you that's not possible. They've never seen that before. Well, so the my, <laughs> my cardiologist didn't bother to mention, you know, dro you dropped your, your, your calcium score, 600 points, pal. He didn't say that basically. Yeah, I, yeah. He's, he, he's, he thinks I'm a heart attack waiting to happen because he's still drinking the cholesterol Kool-Aid. Right. And, I'm, you know, I'm kind of waiting to outlive him because he's obese. Oh, yeah. And, well, he's one of these guys who believes so many people. It's like they, their body image is just dysmorphic. They really think that they're not obese. Mm -hmm. And I know because this is what I was doing, too. Right? Sure. Well, I sure. still got a little muscle definition here. I can't be possibly <laughs> obese. You know, my waist is, what, 42 or something. No, sure. no. Wait, wake up. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, that's interesting. And... So, so day to day, do you intermittent fast at all? Yeah, I generally try to hit like with a six hour window. Nice. I'm still still trying to adjust, you know, my hormones. I'm a late night person, and the late night um, emotional eating trained, you know, hormonally, I'm getting a little 
appetite stimulation around midnight because mm -hmm. that's when I would snack. Yeah. And still, I still haven't fully suppressed that. It's still there's still this yearning to, to eat. And if I eat, if I'm going to eat, I'll eat some fat. But mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. that's my pattern. Generally, I can keep it in a six hour window. Yeah, Sometimes. that's what I do too. I do a yeah. six hour window also. I think. <laughs> I think that's optimal based on autophagy studies and and then remember autophagy is just cells taking out trash and anytime your cells are recycling garbage and taking trash out and getting rid of garbage i mean that's another benefit to getting rid of plaque you know and in your brain yeah. or in your arteries or in your thyroid gland or any kind of garbage that's building up in your body so i think that's why there's such an attack on intermittent fasting because oftentimes it helps people heal and get off a bunch of prescription drugs so there's kind of this undercurrent, right. you know, that people should eat breakfast and breakfast is the most important meal of the day because it <laughs> promotes it promotes big food and promotes big pharma, unfortunately, but it's not healthy to think about for everybody. It's, um, you know, it's one of those conspiracies where they haven't had to get together and have the conference where they create the conspiracy. It's just the mutually uh, agreed upon uh, you know, health goals of make you fat, make you sick. It's yeah, yeah. massively pr profitable for big agra, big mm -hmm. pharma, uh, right. general foods, etc. You know, it's it's not quite a conspiracy, but it's really a conspiracy. Yeah, it's just incentivizing, you know, it's profit incentive, incentivizing profits and not really incentivizing health. And, you know, that's the whole system. Um, now, when you said you tripled your testosterone, what were you were like 300 and you went up to 900 or what are you talking yep, about exactly right yeah yeah i was actually 200 and change and shot up to 8 880 yeah um, which is also a, yeah another another super positive thing for healing artery damage for reversing artery damage you know that's one of the problems with low testosterone like if you go jogging and you have low testosterone you get overtrained and you, it takes you a week to recover, whereas if your testosterone is nice and high, like these guys, these bodybuilders overdoing steroids, they're they're at the gym twice a day because they heal so fast they can go twice a day. And it's terrible to over to overdo steroids and to abuse steroids. But yeah. at least their body heals ridiculously fast. You know, when my dad became a medical doctor, <clears throat> they used to tell people that uh, testosterone causes plaque in people's arteries. It damages mm. your arteries, right? Like literally the opposite of what actually happens. And right. the only reason they used to tell people that and they trained the doctors to say that was because testosterone raises your cholesterol. So they assumed it it causes plaque in people's right. arteries, but they finally have done the studies. They did a study with over 80,000 veterans and they found that people on testosterone replacement therapy, TRT, have far less plaque in their arteries, far less heart disease. Uh, testosterone is protective, even though in those same people it raised their cholesterol. So, you know, it's just it's just good to get these stories out there. I appreciate you doing this, Patrick. I do have to run pretty quick too, and I just wanted the quick version of the story. But you if go. you have anything else you wanted me to circle back and cover, you know, jump in there and let me know. Okay, um, I can't think uh, off the top of my head. Uh, I did want to say uh, my my. Uh, my internist wanted to was doing a still is sort of mystified by the whole thing. He's now he's still on the fence about the the cholesterol hypothesis and metabolic versus metabolic uh, models. And so he he looked at my ApoB, and um, my ApoB is 116, which you know it seems to be high. But mm -hmm. my answer to him was, uh, you know, what is ApoB? And mm -hmm. it's a particle that's involved in fat metabolism and. What do I live on? Fat. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to oh, have, yeah. have high, high ApoB. My triglycerides are 40. I mean, ooh, you know, super. Mm -hmm. so, so it's not a problem. So I think I your video on ApoB is where I got my uh, my inspiration to to address this and did my yeah, research. Yeah, I'm glad you dropped a comment. I mean, I literally only found you from YouTube. And by the way, you're a pro at this. You're better than most some some professional people that do podcasting so <laughs> appreciate you coming on right away on skype and just doing this well you're welcome uh, appreciate you got to go uh yeah patrick we can uh reconnect maybe if i'm gonna get another uh calcium score at some point and uh i'll yeah. drop you in there or something yeah give me an update and you don't mind me posting this on youtube the video 
No, no. I assume that's yeah. what we were doing. That's great. Yeah, exactly. No, I just want to make sure and, you know, keep up the good work, Patrick. I really appreciate your story. I think oh. it's going to inspire other people. And again, I'm I'm impressed. I've had I've heard a lot of people that are in your same situation. And I hope it, I hope we continue to just open the floodgates on this because it's the only we way to do it. You got to burn. Yeah. You got to burn fat to burn plaque. Exactly. And we need more anecdotal information to prompt better research people want to be healthy yeah they it's not the program isn't working this has got to happen I gotta say thanks for your to you too for your stuff it, i watch them i really useful interesting thanks. uh angles that you figure out to to do deal with so all good yeah thanks well in, and that's one of the ways they hijack the research you know just as a in closing the they do these studies where they say, you know, we took a people, we took a group of people that went keto, and then we had a group of people that ate standard American. And then you look at the diet, and they say, oh, there was no difference in heart disease or whatever. And then you look at the keto diet, and it's like full of sugar and stuff. And then they say it's a keto food, but they used fiber to balance out all the sugars. So people are eating like cake and keto cookies and stuff. That's how they've they hijacked this stuff, right? Yeah, it's so obnoxious and frustrating. And they do the same with meat. They do these meat studies and they feed people like bologna and summer sausage is full of sugar and gluten and preservatives and who knows what. And then they blame everything on red meat. It just makes you just angry, yeah. literally. Well, it all goes back to Loma Linda at some point or another. Uh, yeah. And, you know, these, not, these vegan crazies. Mm -hmm. But they control. They, they've really insinuated themselves. So, again, no conspiracy, but conspiracy. Yeah, right on. <laughs> oh, man, I appreciate it. And, and, and have a good okay, rest of your evening. Good. Thanks right. a lot. Take See care, you later. Patrick. Yep. Bye -bye.